Hi, this is Washashore, and I just wanted to do a tutorial on DVD Architect. But let's start with Sony Vegas first. As we render out our movie, go to File, Render As, and it will ask you to put in a name for your movie. After that, it'll say Save As Type. And if you're going to make a DVD, go to MPEG-2. And you'll notice that we don't have any audio. So let's go to NTSC DVD. And when we click on that, we now have audio and video. We're all set. And we can click Save, and it will render out our movie. Alright, as it's rendering, I'm going to open up DVD Architect and we're going to find where we saved our movie and drag that up out of Explorer. Drag it right onto Menu 1, Page 1 and it will put a button up there automatically. Alright, let's start with our background. Um, you can choose a theme or you can choose just a background. The uh, theme has buttons with it. And all you do is double click on a background or a theme and it will put it up in the menu box. What I like to do is go to view workspace overlays and click on show button mask. That way you can see the mask on the buttons without going to the preview all the time. Since nothing is highlighted in the menu box it shows the menu page properties. And I'm going to start with the background media. You can change the background picture to whatever you'd like one of your photos or one of the backgrounds that we saw earlier or you can put in your own video to play in the background. What you do is go to the video line and click on the right side and there will be a drop down menu and there you can browse for the media that you want to put in for the background. You can also put in a soundtrack for your page and uh, it's right below video and you do the same thing to put in the soundtrack for your page. You can have different soundtracks for different pages. So let's hit preview and we'll see what we have for background at the moment. Okay I'm going to change to a blue background just so we can see the buttons and let's edit the text on top there. Uh, just right click, go all the way to the bottom, and it says edit text. And you want that highlighted. And that toolbar right under the menu box is where you make all your changes for your menus. You can change the font and the size and have it bold and italics in a shadow and change the color of the titles. As you can see, the default for a button is an image and text. You can make your button just image or just text or both. As you notice on the left side of the menu box is a toolbar. Those are all centering and justification buttons for your menu buttons. So let's highlight a button and we'll see what changes we can make in the menu on the right. The top button's action. That tells you when you click on that button where it leads, where the navigation is for that button. In this case, it's chapter one. The second one is highlight. 
and it lets you put a mask over the button and if you click on that drop down menu you can put different masks over the buttons. The third one is color sets. This allows you to set up different color combinations and later on you can use these combinations for different actions when you click on a button. For example, color set 1 is the color of the mask that highlights the button that you want to pick. Color set 2 is the color of the action when you click on a button. A lot of this you'll see happen in preview, so just have to hang in there for right now. Alright, navigation is basically the remote control that you use for your DVD player. That tells you where that button is leading to when you click on it. Okay, next button is media. This allows you to have uh, text only, image only, or text and image right next to the button style. There's a drop down menu. Underneath that is the thumbnail media. There you can change the media for your button. You can put in your own picture or you can add a video. And go down a little bit further and there's a style button. And here you can choose between a still or an animated button. And right above that is start time. And you can pick where you want that to start the animation or pick where you want the picture to be. One thing you might want to do is put in a scene selection menu. And to do that is pretty easy. Just double click on your movie button in the middle and your movie will show up on the timeline in the bottom. And what you want to do is there's a cursor on the left edge. You want to drag that to where you want your chapter to be. When you find where you want your chapter, press M for marker. I'm going to put in three or four here. After you put in all of your chapter markers, right above the menu box is a button called Back to Parent. That's the parent menu, and you want to click on that. That'll give you the main menu. And you want to right click on your movie that you made the chapters in and go to insert scene selection menu. You can put in a different title if you'd like. Double click on scene selection and it will bring you another menu box and there you can rearrange the buttons and give them different titles, make them different sizes, things like that whatever you'd like, just put on images or just put in words and change the titles around. Now each button can have something different. A picture or a video or a different frame or whatever you'd like to put on it. Okay, let's preview this and it looks like everything's working pretty good. Well, I know this was a quick tutorial, but I hope this helps you put together some menus with a little more pizzazz. And thanks for watching. This is Wash Ashore.